let's go. Let's go to the game. <laughs> so. Do you want to solo cast this game or what? Yeah. We're not laughing because we hate you now. Um, all right. We're going to throw it over to our awesome, awesome caster Lacoste and his friend B-Cop. Take it away, boys. <laughs> Game number three, getting right on into it. I couldn't do the curse like that. We already proved that it works. We were there. We were all there last game. You have to push the limits, you know. See, maybe it was a fluke. See how many times it can still happen. But yeah, let's uh, talk about uh, more serious about this game. We have Troll and Oracle into Tidehunter, played by Fate Beyond, and Jin Q Ember Spirit. So these are two... Melee heroes into two ranged ones. You can dispel Josh. You can dispel his shield. So, yeah, it doesn't feel too good. You know, I'm not sure what the plan here is. Jin Q will need to do some lane shenanigans, try to pull the lane back closer to the tower so Tide Hunter can get some farm. When you think about the Tide Hunter, yeah, he's, uh, you know, super tanky, but at the early levels, he doesn't have a point in crank and shell most of the time. You get harassed quite a lot. You have no magic resistance except the basic one, so a tough one for sure. So Troll should free farm on the bottom, mid lane, Somnus Batrider against the uh, Raid King mid. Okay. Interesting. To have it's Ame time. Come, in. come into your pubs. <laughs> in 2021. <sighs> Here it is, Wraith King mid. Can't get mad anymore. It's happened in a pro game. What do you get besides level from this hero? I think the plan here is we'll just farm on a Wraith King, get possibly level five and go to the jungle, farm from there. Leave Batrider alone, because like this is not playable lane for you. You have seven sticking up palm charges, make that eight. Yeah, what do you even do to survive here? This feels like a... A matchup that favors Somnus very heavily. Definitely a tough situation for Ame. I wanted to go back to the point about uh, Jin Q. Uh, you know, they talked about how he's going to have to do some shenanigans, but that's usually what you see with him. Um, Faith Beyond, maybe level two, level three, potentially even level four. I think Jin Q leaves the lane and tries to make something happen around the map. We've seen him with this hero before, maybe not during this DPC, but, uh, you know, he does play these unconventional four positions and does really well with them. So I'm ready to see what his approach is going to be with this game because I, I do think he can be the difference maker if LGD. Sure, is right. your game. breaking is. Uh Having a really tough time on the mid lane, 3 CS, Batrider 8 and 5. It's going to get tough as time goes by. Like, you're not going to be able to lane. He might even bail into the jungle after getting a two points in uh, Vampiric Spirit. Yeah, I'm not sure why they decided him, yeah. to do it. Still feel Lycan lanes uh, much... Uh, uh, rating lanes better into Lycan. You have a stun coming out from the AA and a blast. Uh, like, DP would struggle anyway, but uh, so does your raid kick here. Fortune's in on a Faith Beyond Gush. Soon chains damage on a Red Panda. Can't get first blood. <laughs> Slight over. Still no damage there as uh, Red Panda surviving. So they're doing okay in this bottom lane. Only 6-0 right now for the Tide. But, I mean, he's 6-0. Wraith King was 3-1 before he went into the jungle. And it's almost three minutes into the game. I already said it. it it's tough one for him. Like, it's not like he can do anything. We've seen something similar in Southeast Asia when they picked, uh, who was it? Picked Tiny into Batrider. Yeah. That was a very rough game. And now they'll go after Ember for a second. Yuris slows him down. Shinku on the run, rooted up. But uh, Gush onto Red Panda. Faith Beyond back and forth he goes. Indecisive and, well, first blood for Yuris. It was Innocence who got first blood the last two games. This time it ends up being Yuris. They have such a nasty combo on the top lane, actually. Like, Wolves are pretty speedy. 420 move speed once you use uh, Inkswell level 1 on them. So... Nice number overall, and uh, yeah, could potentially set up a kill on Ancient Apparition. I don't think that Prophet should die here, but uh, we'll see. So Raid King still getting some levels on a mid lane. What's his CS? 10 against 22 on a Batrider, trying to use a stun. Yeah, it's really, really tough for him. At least he's even in levels at the moment. But he's going back and forth from that camp, over to mid, trying to do what he can. It's a tough game now where Jinku is coming over for that four-minute rune. 
You've also got the Ancient Apparition making a rotation, but you left Faith Beyond, and you've left him to die. This is something that a lot of the top tier teams are kind of exploiting mid lane. Batrider with the Ink Swell. Stroke of Faith slows him down. Dies. Stun onto the Rain King, and nobody rotating. No one can even rotate. Who, like, they don't have a hero that can stop this uh, kind of an aggression. Like, DP, TPs, it's a safe lane DP. What is she gonna do? Creep Swarm, uh, Jin Q. Can use Searing Chains level one. Uh, this game could potentially just like end in uh, 20, 25 minutes, considering how this is going on right now. Yeah, this is looking fast. 2K lead already. Wraith King in a point where he has to rethink everything. Like it, it's just it's simply just on the matchups. I, I'm not it's sure. It's not nothing you can do. Like you can't play better. You can't kill Batrider. Yeah. This is a really awful spot to be in. Grimstroke going through the jungle. We'll see uh, if he can find maybe this Wraith King or find a potential kill. They go after the Oracle. They've got the combination. Red Panda trying to run. But there's the slow, and here's Yuris. So Red Panda just walks away simply with no boots. Now Ancient Apparition also deep his bottom. Like they should the try to get this kill. Yeah, soon chains and now into the trees. Purifying Flames, Red Panda still alive. Finally falls to Faith Beyond. They got him, but at what cost? This leaves Dead Prophet alone against the Lycan. Lycan has a ton of region coming on from the Feral Impulse. Now last hitting under the tower. We'll get the level six pretty soon. Book one already online. Not sure who's supposed to make the moves for LGD, because uh, your mid laner is Raid King. He wants to just farm the jungle, try to recover. Tidehunter needs his levels. Uh, so does Jinky on this Ember Spirit. For now, he's playing a good game, you know, trying to drag the creep wave. Right. Getting stacks on the Ancients, but I don't think that's that's enough. This is a very fast lineup from Elephant. Uh, it's very fast so far. Faith Beyond does hit that five, throws a gush out of Yuris. He's trying to get in front of this Tide. Unable to do so. One of the things that I'm worried about for LGD is how much food will Ancient Apparition be for this Lycan? Oh, they might get Somnus here. Inkswell on the run, slowed up just out of Cold Feet proccing. That was almost enough slow to keep him close enough where that procs and he's probably dead. That would have been the best opportunity LGD's had this game so far. For sure. Death Prophet is closer to level 6. So they should try to play around her a bit more, use that exorcism, probably pressure the tower. But that profit, uh, like you don't get that much from killing a tier one uh, offlane tower. Grimstroke, ink swell, and that'll pop. But the cold feet freezes FY over, and they just need one more it's shot, so which happy. comes in from Innocence. Ancient Apparition gets that kill. They're still putting the pressure onto Faith Beyond Bottom, but they are finding opportunities and kills in other lanes. So Faith Beyond, as long as he doesn't die here and get his levels, I think they're okay with that. Now, this could have been any other player playing that Raid King, you know, lose the lane, go to jungle, farm Hand of Midas. It, it's a very tough game for Raid King. He's just not going to be out of the jungle for a very, very long time. Team needs to make some space, make him recover. He's level six, seven minutes in. Uh, he would be pretty much the same level if he was just playing the safe lane. It's just how much he's getting out of these lanes. And you can you, you still have to compare him to Troll, right? At the end of the day, he's going to be farming like he's your one position, because he is. So right now, he's sitting a full thousand gold behind uh, uh, Yuris, who's had basically a free lane up against him. The Red King is... A Faster farmer until Troll gets a Battle Fury. First exorcism. exorcism. Um, only level five for Faith Beyond. They've got the soul with a chilling touch. Now Yura is trying to TP out. And is Cold Feet going to proc in time? No. They went for that without Ravage. And this is while Yang is just pressuring the top tier one. They're going to try and use this exorcism to get the tier one bottom and make a trade on tower. But I like that more. Nothing to say. Already talked about the importance of a tier one uh, top tower, which is like they don't care, so he rotates to the bottom lane, tries to take that one instead. Red Panda's still in the trees. They will look for him. And they will spot him. 
So now they've got the Spirit Siphon. They have the control to Cold Feet, or will they? It's dispelled with the Fortunes, and Somnus coming over, looking for a target, gets the lasso. Yuris back in, Ravage used, nothing to say, trying to survive, has the Spirit Siphon. It doesn't look like the Ravage is going to be enough to save this Death Prophet. And now they'll look for Innocence as well as Faith Beyond. Flame Break, nothing to stop the TP, but the damage, oh! Almost enough Very to take close. out that Ancient Apparition. And while all that was happening, uh, Lycan takes the top tower, has a Necro Book uh, 2 coming to him, will be Necro 3 before 10 minute mark, I believe. So some really sick timing. Then he can start uh, pressuring the other lanes, move to the mid lane. It's also Raid King into Lycan. Well. Jinkyu. A good setup. Pops while Somnus is TPing in. That's beautiful. Just beautiful. Being able to set up the sun with the Inkswell on the creep that he's Boots of Traveling in. Doesn't get any better than that. Yep. Use Inkswell on an Invis Lycan Wolf. Mention Lycan against Raid King, where his mana is going to get burned. So you will have that Necro 3 pretty soon. Shard available after 20 minute mark. You also don't want to just rush that item. You need the, like a Radiance. Let's see what item he decides to go for on Raid King. Might need to adjust his item build if things are not going well. Maybe get like an armlet to be able to fight with the team if like everything is just falling apart. Yeah, it's looking rough so far, but we'll have to see. Battle Fury being built here for Eurus. They're looking to get this kill. They don't have Ravage to play with. Nothing to say getting chased under the Tier 2 tower, but this doesn't back up anybody on LGD to come back over. They'll find Eurus, and they need to stay on top of this troll to get the kill. They slow him up. They've got the cold feet. They just don't have a way to keep him close and get that one. So pressure on nothing to say. Pressure on Eurus, neither of which die. But now FY shows up, Inkswell silence, okay, Phantom's Embrace, that'll silence the Tide, I'm not sure this saves FY though, Showing Touch, Anchor Smash, there's the kill, Somnus in, he's got Lasso in too, doesn't even need to use it, Faith Beyond, he ends up dead, Innocent's trying to TP out, but the damage is too much, they'll get two kills anyway, and they still hold that Lasso. Yeah. Somnus is like, I don't even need to use Lasso here, we'll still get the two kills, and they also defend the Troll, so Eurus... Kind of securing his game, uh, still sitting at zero deaths, getting closer to Battle Fury. Raid King, less farm than Lycan at the moment. So you have three cores from Elephant on top right now. Necro 3 finished. Time to move to the mid lane. Pressure that tower. Just make the map smaller for the enemy team. So Raid King's game gets very difficult Dyer's at this middle point. Tower is under attack. His mana gets burned, he's dead. And at the moment, he's not providing you with uh, any kind of damage. So that's uh, really rough. Let's see the rotation from Yang. Necrobook summoned. No shapeshift for another 25. Exorcism, that's coming in. Fly running away. Ravage, in, okay, not there's the Yules. There's the Yule Scepter. I was like, does he pop it or not? So Yang, Yang is very close. Sightseeing chains from Jinkyu over onto the Oracle. Ice Blast following this up. False promise. And now Red Panda in a bad way as he'll get chased down. Nothing to say. We'll make sure that he ends up dead. Two heroes got on the side of Elephant. Exorcism lasting for just a couple seconds longer, but they will get the Tier 1 mid. This is not a bad move from LGD. And ooh, Side of Fist Searing Chains, they're Buy looking for Somnus. Ravage gets used, they get the kill on a Somnus. Oracle TP's in. He's just too late, and he's already used the False Promise, but look at the damage on Nothing to Say. Faith Beyond, he'll get chased too. Yang coming in with a Shape Shift and Cleaning House. I'm not sure that buyback was needed. Yang was uh, waiting on the high ground for a very long time, trying to backstab the enemy team. Unfortunately, did not have Shapeshift ready. Troll finishes the Battle Fury. Still, I call this a decent trade for LGD, where they got the tower, they got one buyback from Red Panda, an early one. And that Ice Blast, if it was on the money a little bit more, they'd probably get that kill. Flame Breaking, Swell, Jing Qiu got. Uh, that is a quick kill on an Ember 4. Batrider is so speedy. Or Archer Aura, Ink Swell, max move speed coming on from the Batrider pretty much. So it's continually extending. Now into a 5k lead. And they're 
they're searching through the jungle. They want to get the kill on the Wraith King, but he's already TP'd out. Just trying to farm as best he can. Try to get to that Radiance as quickly as possible, but it is a long ways out. Silence with the Phantoms in Braiths. Faith Beyond in trouble. Fortune Zen, Purifying Flames, Stroke of Fate, holding the lasso, and what another Purifying Flames. They just kite Faith Beyond so well. They don't even use done. the lasso. Not even using the lasso, as you mentioned. Phantoms of Ray, something Tidehunter doesn't like to play into. Can't crack an off that silence, so you need to actually hit it. So we... It's a possibility they just, you know, try to take one more fight, possibly pressure the Tier 2 Tower on top. Transition that into Roche. There's enough damage from Troll, from Lycan. Pretty much you can always go inside the pit. Uh, yeah. Respecting Tidehunter, his respawn. PSG LGD just needs time to recover. Similar story to game two, where they like needed to just farm up on Medusa. And uh, now Ame is, you know, not a non factor in this game. Pretty much playing four versus five until he gets that radiance up. Shape shift. God, innocence just getting destroyed. We talked about how every shape shift, innocence is going to be chilling in his boots. And, uh, well, that is. Oh, they a found lot Ame, I think. But the Tide Hunter with the TP says no, no. He's got Ravage. You need to be careful fighting into that shape shift down. And, uh, well. It's still a tough tight. It's a tough fight, despite the fact that you're down 7k. Maelstrom, first big item for the Ember. We'll see if he gets to it. Not the fastest farming game for Jinku. Very greedy overall. Just, you know, you have position 4 Ember Spirit. Tidehunter off lane. You have Raid King mid, who didn't get much out. Went for Hand of Midas. Elephant should use this info and just try to pressure more fight. Fighting into Ravage is scary. That Prophet is level 11, so Somnus. ghosts don't hurt that much. Remnant and the Searing Chains. Rules into the air. Exorcism committed. Somnus trying to survive with a Flame Break. Won't be able to do so, but this is Exorcism committed. This is Exorcism into no objectives, which yeah. is something you don't like to see. So, yeah, fighting into Roche right now should be a good chance for Elephant. Troll even picks up a double damage. Could wait a bit until Batrider spawns. Bottom instead. So, Wraith King going for the Radiance. Ink Swell slowed up in some trouble. Fortune Zen, he does get the reincarnation off. Ice Blast coming in if anybody jumps him. Soulbind and Death Prophet and Wraith King in a four legged sack race as they walk back to the tier two. Remember, this is off-lane Lycan. It's not a safe lane or a mid lane, so you will still have one extra court to scale, and that's your troll. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to, you know, rush things. Like, we're on the clock. Like, we need to do stuff right now. You would want to do stuff, but you have three scaling cores, so you're kind of secured in the late game. Wraith King is making his way back. The problem is the rest of the team isn't. Really tough for LGD at the moment. Another smoke used by Elephant. Waiting on that troll to get some farm. Like you said, it doesn't rely on Lycan's timings for this lineup to work. GQ spotted. Phantom's Embrace. Fortune's End coming in. And he's rooted up, but now Ravage. Ice Blast all coming through with the Gush Yang. See you later. They're going to go the other way, though. They've got the lasso out onto the Wraith King, who just used that reincarnation. So he won't have it up again. Ame ends up dead. He did buy out on the Radiance before he goes down. But they found Faith Beyond, Fortunes, and Inkswell all locking up this Tidehunter. They've got the Yules and put Yuris up in the air. But it's not looking like LGD can get anything more out of this. It's just a question of whether or not Elephant eats for anything else. Faith Beyond is tanky. And Cracker Shell is maxed out. So is Anchor Smash. Uh, you still lose the Lycan, good trade for Elephant, where they can go into the Roche Pit. They know there's no Ravage right now, so once Lycan respawns, I think it's uh, time to Roche. Two deep wards from PSG LGD, so they can spot any movement coming up from the Tier 1, possibly Tier 2 Tower. And there it is, so they will know that the uh, Lycan wants to get inside of the pit. So, a lot of warding coming out from Innocence. 
see just 19 wards for him. Trying to keep vision on the map to stop things like this happening. Not sure they really have a, a choice, though. No Ravage to work with. Maybe they can fight in. They do have Reincarnation as well as Exorcism. Radiance is up. You know, Exorcism is level 2 right now, so there's going to be damage. Unfortunately, they do not have a Ravage, but I think you try to take this fight. AA Blast is actually coming inside a pit. If that hits on multiple heroes, they should go in. And there it is, coming down. Are they going to make the move through? Machine oh, Q Q gets it! How does he get away with that? Oh, my! They go after Yang. He's in trouble. Soulbind. That's through. They've leashed up the Tidehunter to the Wraith King. And he is single-handedly saving this game so far. And now Faith Beyond goes after Red Panda. Exorcism, Stroke of Fate, slows down, nothing to say. They're trying to fight with this Exorcism, and I have a feeling, well, Elephant, yeah, you may have gotten the Aegis on LGD, but they want to fight into this. Ice Blast, Cold Feet, all through, Honest on this. There's die. the Battle Trance, trying to fight this. Death Prophet is getting the Ghost back, surviving through it all. Oh, no, Eccurus, he's going to drop. Somnus dead as well. Yang's going to fall. LGD, somehow, coming through. Big time. Oh, they heavily committed for that fight. Troll uh, did not have his BKB yet. Went for a Death Prophet. Uh, such a great timing for that Prophet. Yeah. Ghosts are coming back, uh, healing her fully. Batrider didn't even have Lasso there. He uses Yule Scepter, but already got clipped by AA Alti. So once you get down, you're still gonna die. Now PSG LGD, they have Ravage up once again. Uh, reincarnation back. Oh my god. He's just gonna get two shot. Red Panda, oh no. Survives. FY coming over. Fortune's end. FY in. Phantom's embrace. Inkswell. Faith Beyond with the Ravage. Only hits on to FY. Buyback from Grimstroke. Somnus is chasing. Lasso online. No re reincarnation. Yeah, they've got this Wraith King dead to rights. Down goes Ame. Faith Beyond. They might have bitten off more than they can chew. And the ones looking to bite off their other way is Elephant. <laughs> this is not clean Dota. Like, so many mistakes from both teams. Uh, like, trying to use Ravage on two people to save two Raid King. Yeah, what is, uh, what is Ame even doing there? I think they just tried to get greedy and get a quick support killing out, but Radiant's that just doesn't happen. And then Radiant's there's no vision top. whatsoever for so Dyer. Like, there's a whole jungle available for him. Yeah, let's watch Ooh. that fight once again. Jin Q. Timing. What a player, man. Wow. Just. Just a thief. A thief in the night. Okay. So. This lineup will also scale. Jin Q going for greedy items, snatch that Aegis. We'll get Maelstrom eventually, and the Orb of Corrosion procs reducing the armor by three, slowing them down. It's like AoE slow coming up from Slide of Fist. Wow. Now that is going to be difficult to deal with, and this is now feeling like a closer matchup than it was just a few moments ago. It was 7K, now 4K. One of the things I do want to say, you said it was sloppy Dota, but it is fun Dota. I feel it like is. These games are always it is. really exciting. This the more mistakes, ends. the more funny it is, and yeah. more fun to watch for sure. Games like this usually end with one or two divine rapiers. One can only hope. And tier fives. We don't need to get there. B cup. So <laughs> raid king actually managed to farm another item. Blink dagger on top of radiance. Uh, he should probably get that shard eventually. We'll see how the next fight goes. Mana burn. Let's the see if they can do it. Go after Ame. They've got the damage. Fortune's end coming in, but they haven't burned his mana just yet. Now they're chasing. Ice Blast used, and they've got the Soulbind. That's Tidehunter connected to the Death Prophet. They get the first life out of the hands of the Wraith King. All they got so far is an Ancient Apparition. They have used Exorcism, though. Maelstrom finished off by Jin Q. Elephant. They got what? Eh, not what they came for, but they've had enough, and they'll back away. AC completed on Lycan. That's going to help out uh, against that Prophet. Uh, that's going to help out uh, against some right-click damage coming out uh, from the Raid King. And uh, yeah, just allows you to... Like, you have a core, an offlaner that has 23 minutes AC, something that usually you don't see. Wolves with the Ink Swall trying to make something happen. Nothing happens. 
Sanji and Yasha for the troll. Elephant really staying as five at the moment. Batrider finally TPs away from this group of heroes and has that arcane rune going into the blink dagger next. Radiance middle tower is under attack. But while this is all happening, Death Prophet's really recovered. Wraith King's up there with the troll. And this game is only a 2k lead. Looks like a much, much closer game. Wraith King managed to get a lot of the farm. Team was keeping Elephant busy while he was just farming the jungle. Midas is ready. Let's see the efficiency. Um, it, well. On spot. Bottom. And now they've got the boots to travel. Slight. And the leave with the remnant. So they don't get that kill. Trying to be sneaky with it. Searing Chains edition of 0.8 seconds. Get even more control here for LGD if possible. Nice blast through onto Yang. Cold feet. Oh, oh he's super he's dead. dead. He's shattering. Just too much damage. Stun lock. A lot of mistakes from Elephant. Thought they were going to pressure a bit more once they took down a tier 1 tower on a top lane. Because... They were super greedy. You had Ember Spirit position four, who had no items. Raid King had Hand of Midas, which means that he does not want to join any fights. Mm -hmm. Just respecting Ravage too much, I would say. The omnipresence of that Ravage causing Elephant maybe not to pressure into this LGD team, and now the game sits even. We see a lot of more greedy position fours in Chinese region. Like uh, Baboka, also known as Borax, uh, playing like a Monkey King. We see more Puck, and now Ember Spirit position four. We were talking. Can't about... wait to see like Anti Mage, Phantom Lancer position four. <laughs> hey, I, I mean Jin Q plays it all. He could do it. I think he's played both those heroes before. I want to say I saw him play Anti Mage, but that could just be me dreaming. Who knows. But 25 minutes, 40 seconds in. Game sits even from 7K to even. It's a big shift in net worth that to, out to this point. And now Solar Crest on the tide. Yeah. Tide just going for the correct item build here, I would say. Blink Dagger to be able to surprise them once they get a good jump. Now Solar Crest against the Lycan. Troll going to work out uh, really well. No one wants to fight. Both of these teams are like, yeah, we're fine with the... Actually, just farming the creeps. Roshan may respawn in 45 seconds. BKB finished on Ame, so yeah, his mana can't be burned. Doesn't even go for that shard. He's level 20. You see the highest level in the game? Yeah, him and Troll are. Yeah, not going for that shard yet. Hasn't exactly been a problem for yeah, him up to this point. Exactly. And also, we didn't talk about like the neutral items. Quicksilver Amulet, the one of the best ones you can get on a Raid King. Your Vampiric Spirit is pretty much always on cooldown, so you get that Extra move speed, extra attack Radiance speed. Middle tower is under attack. So we'll see who's going to fight here as both teams have smoked up. Trying to make something happen, but neither team committing. Looked like Elephant really wanted, wanted to make a play there. But again, maybe stopped by the omnipresence of Rabbit. Seems to be something that's been holding them back this game. Ravage and Death Prophet ulti right now just seems super scary. I don't want to smoke again. It seems like it. Second smoke consecutive. Hang over nearby. Slight was used. Searing chains. And that allows Elephant to just ditch from this entire part of the map. Shinku kind of giving away their positioning with that smoke. Dyer are scanning. Two smokes, can't find any openings. Roche will respawn in minute and 20. So even if they get that kill, a couple of kills, enemy team would still be able to respawn. Nothing to say. Trying to find something. Inkswell, Somnus thinking about going forward. Now they've got a haste room picked up for this bat rider. Ame going for an AC. He's got BKB in his pack now. And there's an Orb of Destruction. Good neutral item picked up for this Wraith King. Is it fair to say that Yang's kind of falling off? 
at this point in the game? Or is it too, like, we haven't had much to really tell just yet? He didn't uh, get, like, any kills pretty much in the last 10 minutes. So yeah, Lycan as a hero definitely falls off. One thing he can do, we've seen that in Southeast Asia region, buy Aghanim oh, yeah. Scepter, use it on Troll. That doesn't sound too bad. Half We've troll, seen the combination man, between Ursa and the Troll, and it worked amazing with the overpower, like the crits. Yeah, same thing could happen with the aura, the Troll, not aura, the passive the Troll has. A lot of attack speed. Asher picked up for the Troll. Still, both these teams ready to posture, ready to go for Roche. It's up. And Elephant and LGD, they're waiting and uh, looking for an opportunity to get this second Roche. So we'll have to see what they can go for here at the 30 minute mark. BKB being built here for nothing to say. You've got Faith Beyond who has that Solar Crest, Lotus Orb there as well. MKB being built here for the troll before he finishes off the Abyssal. So we'll see how much this MKB or how quickly this MKB can get in. As again, it looks like Elephant, they're waiting for potentially a moment to go and smoke. They are grouped up right by their tier two tower, so. They should be out of smokes. Could be any moment. I don't see any smokes. Oh, they're just gonna group up, wait and go. I know how to handle such power. Looked like they were grouping up for some sort of an execution there, but it really just, doesn't turn into much. Both these teams playing very passive. Yeah, we didn't see any fights for the last like 10 minutes. No one just wants to engage. Second Roshan, too important. Don't want to be giving it up. And again, now LGD, they'll group up too. So, you know, obviously both these teams feel just the urgency of getting this Rosh. And they're sitting together, not looking to overstep, not looking to go out too far. And now LGD, they're looking for their opportunity to take this second Roche, actually kill it this time, and get the Aegis instead of Jinkyu going to swipe it. BKB looking for the last open, the Lotus Orbs in time! Ice Blast coming in, and now it's going to go across. Yule's up into the air on the Death Prophet, but Death Prophet's Lower not going to make it out. Eurus gets the kill, nothing to say, immediately buys back. They'll go up to the Wraith King, they'll get the first life out of the hands of Ame. They got the Kona Innocent, so three dead on the side of LGD, and now they've got the second life for the Wraith King. Inkswell, Uris running, Faith Beyond, Blink trying to get the Ravage, but there's the Yules up into the air, and now LGD back into Roche as everything has been used by Elephant. It's he just still a win LGD. for LGD because Death Prophet bought back, she used ulti. Uh, she's going to have that Aegis for the next five minutes, and they can start uh, putting some pressure on the Elephant sides. Ravage Gosh. still available. Nice blast, leading. It's the Oracle, and I believe hit that Grimstroke. However, diving under the tier three, ill advised. Elephant uh, went for that profit. They understand, like during the BKBs, we need to fight uh, that profit. We need the killer because this is the most damage in the team fights. They do that. It's still not good enough. Talking about the Aghanim Scepter on Lycan, he has one queued up. Might be too late. Not sure how much farm he can get. I want to see some aggressive move from LGD. You know, you have that Aegis. Uh, you're pretty much fighting seven versus five at the moment. Who's holding the cheese? Cheese? Raid King. Raid King, okay. So, I understood with that last Aegis. You take your time, you recover, you come back, you were down by so much, it was a risky play to even go for that. This one, you've got your farm, the game is close, you feel confident. Like you said, with this Aegis, they should be fighting. Ahmed said, like, I don't want any shenanigans. I'll get that Aghanim shard, so my mana can be burned. I don't care about that. Also, AA shard. Like, that. that's S tier shard for sure. Like, deals 40 DPS and reduces attack speed by 20. Uh, you can cancel the blink daggers with it. Uh, it's so good. You don't expect, you know, that this spell actually deals the damage. You slow them down. It's really, really good. Not originally seen as a top tier shard, but then I think people kind of took notice, figured it out. It's just something that AA struggles with. If he is in a fight long enough, he's not a hero that can get close. 
but with the new shard you can still like deal damage because pretty much it was about yeah i'll use cold feet to use ice vortex maybe for some extra damage use ice blast and that's it then i'm done with the yeah. new shard you can still continue to deal damage yeah it's just a question of whether or not innocence can survive that long he's been chased down by the lichen a couple times only did five times i thought this game would look a lot worse at this point has the ghost scepter to protect himself against some of the right clicks still purgeable by the necro warriors smoke picked up by grimstroke and ancient apparition blink dagger for the oracle trying to find positioning with the aether lens to go and get that false promise out maybe get a save that changes the tides of these fights pun intended swift blink for wraith king we'll see um how quickly he can get into this because his farm is really skyrocketed. From the abysmal lane he had to now is very impressive for Mame. He's just insanely farmed. That's what Raid King does. Pretty much just the farms a lot. Gets back Lasso later on. onto Jinkyu. Look at the damage coming out into the Ember. They get a kill. They'll pop the BKB. They're chasing. Nothing to say. Pops the Exorcism. Ame in pretty far, throws that Wraith Fire Blast out. Faith Beyond, he does have Ravage, but there's the BKB from Uris. Now gets in onto Faith Beyond. Right click's coming through, eats the cheese, trying to survive, outlast this BKB, but unable to do so. Soulbind connects the Ancient Apparition over to the Wraith King, but they get the right click and just blow up Yang. Whoa, Nelly. Uris now on the run. He doesn't have a BKB. If they could just spot him, he's in a lot of trouble. Cold Feet, Spirit Siphon, all onto the troll as well as the Silence. They'll focus their attention onto the Oracle. He's silenced. He's dead. Can't get a False Promise off to save Uris. They get the kill on the Innocent. Somnus gets that one. Remnant forward looking for the finish into the battle transfer. There's a the duel. Scepter. Flame Break hits on the Shinkyu. He'll be dead anyway. Uris gets the kill there, but he's still getting controlled up, and eventually he will fall. Yang back into this one with the Inksoil right on top of him. Nothing to say. Back and forth. Looks over at FY. Back over to Yang. But now, without mana, what is he, what is he able to accomplish? Link forward from Ame as well as the Wraith Fire Blast. Here is Buff back into the fight. He's trying to fight this one. BKB pop by Yang. They'll go after the Wraith King. He does every incarnation. That gets popped. Death Prophet coming back with the second life. Stun though from the Inksoil. Right clicks on the FY. Ame hits real hard. Crypt Swarm's going to be the finish from nothing to say on the FY as they're trying to run away, but the BKB's been popped by Yuris. Goes with the right clicks on the Ame. Gets the kill on the Wraith King. Looks over the Death Prophet. Yules up into the air. BKB's going to run out in just a second. Here comes Faith Beyond. There's the Ravage. They look over it. Somnus. They'll get the kill on the Bat Rider, and the Death Prophet's still going to be dead as the Shapeshift comes out from Yang. They'll chase over it. Faith Beyond. He's trying to run. He's already used Ravage. They've got nothing else to go with this. They're looking to chase. He's still in the Shapeshift. This wolf can run, but can he kill? Yes, he can. Faith Beyond will get run down. Yuris will get the finishing blow. No, it will be Yang with the triple kill. Oh, man. This is a fight. I think like 12, 13 heroes died in that fight the fight was going on for such a long time that tidehunter managed to respawn because uh, i don't think he wanted to use the buyback there and uh, yeah just uh, overall a very long fight i was surprised to see yang buying back uh, on a lichen but what he brought to the team fight was the ac aura just uh, madness man this is a uh, pure chaos it's something we don't usually see teams uh, buying back on pretty much every single hero yeah. to win a fight where you can't transition that into Roche. Yeah, it's just a fight that goes on forever bottom. I mean, Yang's in there twice. I'm pretty sure has multiple shape shifts throughout the entire thing. You originally saw Faith Beyond hold the Ravage up against yours because he's got the BKB. There's no reason to throw it. Eventually, he comes back into the fight, walks in and ravages, and then he ends up dying anyway. They got to two tier two towers, a lot of levels. Troll very close to Satanic. How many buybacks was that? Think about three. One, two, four. three buybacks, I believe. Bouncy. Maybe four. So let's watch it again. Smoke here. This is going to be a long one. But uh, yeah, Ame, Internet of Vision for a second. Gets spotted by the wolves. They've got the lasso on this ember. This is how it starts originally. Look at where Ame is. He kind of blinks and Yang just BKBs and shapeshifts and walks right by him. Like that's crazy to think that this all starts with just going after Faith Gun. What is he going to do here? Ravage? It's just, it would do nothing to him. Yeah, there's no reason to use the Ravage. Their Elephant trying to get rid of the second, actually third, the tier 2 tower on the top lane. They took over the outpost. Roshan may respawn in minutes and 27 seconds. I don't think I've ever seen that. You know, teams just straight up buying back without, uh, you know, reason. To, they can't end the game. None of the teams can. 
And uh, yeah, no Roshan, so just, you know, let's buy back, let's fight. Yeah. I love that. I mean, they kill Oracle, make sure that Yuris can't survive, but even then, Yuris gets the Battle Trance off with just a sliver of health, still kills Jin Q, and then this is where Yuris ends up losing his life, but he'll buy back instantly. Tries to get to the fight, he's got the outpost to go to, not a lot of mana left on, nothing to say. He's got an Aegis to work with, but even that wasn't enough. Like, this was a fight with Reincarnation, with Aegis, with multiple buybacks. Like you said, it felt like 12 heroes died here, and I'm pretty sure he got the number right. I'm not counting at this moment. But I I'm just stopped gonna counting it. after 10 dead, so I was like, man, this is uh, <laughs> this is insane. Let's see some tier 4 items. A Raid King finds a Penta Edge Sword. Passive. You have Lasso. Oh, Lotus Sword quick enough again. Faithbeyond's coming in. He's got the Ravage. He pump fakes it because he sees the BKBs go off from both Somnus as well as yours. They'll get the kill on to nothing to say. Now the chase Faith Beyond. This is not the first time that he's kind of baited himself in looking for that Ravage that gets stopped with the BKBs. But there's the Ravage with the BKB being popped by Ali. They go after Yang. They get the kill on the Lycan. Faith Beyond's going to drop afterwards. Yuris trying to fight. He's been beaten by the wolf. He's got that Ags and he is now a wolf himself. Half man, half troll, half wolf. And going after the side of LGD, but finally backs away. These buybacks uh, kind of cost them a lot. You can can't still transition that into Roche because Roshan is not up. And the longest respawn in the history, almost full three minutes on the Roshan. So they can keep fighting, you know. Ice Frog is watching this. Gavin <laughs> says, I'll press the button, not allow them to take the Roche. I like this Dota. I want them to Ooh, keep ice fighting. Blast. That's coming in. That's going to hit on a Somnus. They can kill on the FY if they can go on to this. Bat Rider, that'd be great, but they're leashed up and, well, they're going different directions and not really deciding. Like, this is anyone's game to take, considering yeah. how the game the is buybacks. going. 5k gold lead doesn't matter that much. There are only four heroes with the buybacks right now. Two supports, Grim and Oracle, and Dead Prophet and Tidehunter on PSG LGD. Courier trying to see if there's uh, Roshan inside the pit. Not going to be there for quite some time. Yeah. Still some time, and you have to be careful because Troll doesn't have his buyback. Lycan doesn't have his. I mean, the same thing could happen to Elephant that just happened to LGD. Just take those last two outer towers. So we'll see. Abyssal Blade finally finished there for Eurus. Octarine Core being built for the Fat Rider. So Somnus, Shiva's Yules going to the Octarine Core has the spell prism. A lot of cooldown reduction already, and. LGD. Gear used by Ember. Has that Ags as well as the Maelstrom. Let's see if they can make anything happen. Ame's got that Swift Blink ready to go. 41 minutes into the game and LGD, they're grouping up potentially to make something happen right before this Roche becomes available. And there's the five-man smoke. Let's see if they can find anybody across the map. You gotta remember, no buyback for the Lycan as well as the Troll. To catch either one of them. It could be big coming into this next Roche, which is almost up. The timings might work out. Fade Beyond kills the Courier. I wanna see how much Troll can do when he gets bitten by a wolf. So much sustain from Troll. Like if Oracle pops the ulti on a Troll, I don't think he even wants to use it on him because he's like super hard to kill unless they decide to burst him. There's some status resistance coming up from SNY. Up. Is that enough though, the status resistances and everything that he's he got? He should be able to get his BKB oh, or Somnus. Satanic or Alti off. Look how far he went for that. They knew that the Remnant was there. They catch this Ember and now dead for 90. That is a big timing. He was the one who stole the first Aegis. And now, well, he's not gonna be available for the next fight. 80 seconds without him. Well, really, 40. Uh, his buyback's on cooldown for another 40 seconds, so he he could get back in. It might time out right for him. He has enough gold for buyback, you are correct. Roche just respawned, let's see what it is. It's an Ags. Who do you give it to? Would it be like, worth on Troll? Troll is good. The double like, lasso is always nice too. Double lasso feels good. On top of that, like Oracle seems fine, where you get Illusion. From the Raid King, Dark Portrait seems good. 150 damage from the original hero. We haven't gone for this Roche yet. And now buyback is available for Jin Q. Trying 
try and go for this. They might need the buyback. They need to make something happen on the side of LGD. He just cheese as well as the Ag's Blessing. Inkswell, Sonnet's looking for a move. Blake out of the high ground. Whoa! Going in with the double stun. They've got themselves the Soul Bite as well as the Lotus Orb onto the Death Prophet. But there's the Yules up into the air with the BKPs being popped by Elephant. They've got the Soul Bite keeping this Wraith King connected to the Death Prophet. They look over at nothing to say who's trying to survive but ends up dying. Popping that Exorcism and that's not going to work out. They've got the Ravage as well as the Ice Blast coming through as the first life is going to be taken away Man, from the Wraith King. They mark. look over at Eurus who's being bitten by the Wolf. He's a big bad Wolf coming for your lives. He'll blow your house down if it's made of straw, and that's what it's looking like is keeping up LGD. They get the kill on the Innocence. They got the False Promise out of yours, and now they bought back on nothing to say he's in a lot of trouble. They bought back on the Ancient Apparition as well, HP. but they get the kill on the Ame. He's going to buy back. So three buybacks used on the side of LGD. They're going to go after oh, this. The Silence is out on to Yang as well as yours. They get the kill on another to say Take him out for a minute and... Well, two minutes, really. It was 123 seconds. They look over at Fifi who's low on health. Jinq trying to go in on a Yang to get the kill. They'll take out yours as well as FY3. Heroes gone. They go back in a Roche. Can they take this? There's buybacks available by the troll as well as this uh, Grimstroke, but LGD, I'm not sure they have the confidence to go for this. Oh, it seems like they're not going to contest it. Double damage picked up by oh, a Wraith King. Yeah, that'll so, help. Oh, Aghanim Scepter, who do you give it to? Like, uh, Ancient Apparition is not the carrier. Possibly you pick it up, give it to Tide, or give it to Dead Prophet. Like, Wraith King is also okay-ish. He'll take it. Yeah, like that. That's one is good, you know, to be able to just deal more damage with the heroes. Uh, Lycan, he did not have buyback there. So I, I think if Lycan has buyback, they buy back on multiple heroes as well. Because Troll was like, yeah, I, I want to buy back. So much Ooh. damage coming up from Troll once he's bitten. Going on to the high ground, 47 seconds still without this Lycan. Side of fists, searing chains, and a Wraith Fire Blast wasted on an illusion. There's the lasso coming through under the Wraith King. They're going to buy back on the group stroke as well as the troll. They look over as the Wraith King's in between the tier of forces. He loses his first life. He still has the Aegis, so this is really looking like potentially a four life scenario, but they just have the damage to rip through this Wraith King. Second life. So they take on the Aegis. They still have 30 seconds left on the reincarnation. Can he survive this long enough? It's not looking like it as he pops the BKB, but the right click is coming in for Yuris. Oh, he's Death trying to run. Third. He's dead again. Three heroes. It's three heroes equivalent as Wraith King loses. Get a kill oh my almost. god. Wow. Grim stroke. Is he going to be saved? It's not looking likely, but uh, he's yeah, okay. he's good. He's now okay. he's fine. Like last second, Whee. he was very close to dying. Still chasing. God, the lasso That That lives. lasso, man, he dragged him into tier four towers. The rest of the team ready to kind of block them off on the entrance uh, near the tier threes. So nicely done by Somnus. So the equivalent of taking out three heroes. I mean, he got through the Wraith King three times. He does not have buyback. It's no, a cooldown for five and a half minutes. So yeah, Elephant, they should try to go in. Lasso, back online. Another There's good Lotus Lasso. Orb. Lotus Orb comes in. That's going to be put on the Ancient Apparition. They've also got the Shiva's butt. Now, Ravage coming through, stops Eurus, BKB as well as the False Promise is going to be pasted on Asomnus, but if you're not trying to run, but the Flame Break pushes him back, he'll pop that Ghost Scepter, Ice Blast comes across the bow of the side of Elephant, as well as a Remnant Forward, who may be looking over at Red Panda, but that's a risky maneuver to go after Somnus, he's also TP back to the base. Should try to go in, Bat Rider will reset, Boots of Travel ready in 15, uh, no Exorcism, still up and running for like 10-15 uh, seconds, Raid King gone for 50, they should try to make something happen, no Ravage, uh, this is their timing need to make something happen. No big ults available for LGD, but the Wraith King's up in 40 seconds. How much can they get out of this? Is it enough time for them to really find any success? They move over towards bottom, and they're going to use these creeps, use these wolves, try to move in, get something going their way, as also mids pushing in. So they need to be careful on the side of LGD, as they've got 27 seconds until the Wraith King is up. This Lotus Orb has been clutch as it saved them from these lassos, but there's Blinken as well as the Flame Break. That pushes them back. Now they've got the double Hex, double Abyssal, double Lasso. They're in trouble. Oh, Shinkyu's the only one who falls. Faith Beyond just surviving. Uh, they're melting. Like, look at this. Aghanim Scepter, Aghanim Shard. But they're still going there in. Oh, goes in dog. first hit root. Of course it is. They've got the Silence. Do they have the damage? The force they have back moves in the air. Tide survives. Tide is okay for now. All they've lost is the tier three bottom. Ame trying to blink in and maybe find Somnus, but well, he blinks in, wraps his hands around the air as he finds nothing. If you don't think about it, like you're kind of used to how the spells and abilities in Dota work. You see shard upgrade from Ancient Apparition, Ice Vortex, 40 DPS. 
you see short upgrade from Ember Spirit. That's 45 DPS. So that's like 85 per second. They had multiple Radiant of those. Awesome. It's like uh, add Radiance Burn to that. That's a, a lot of overtime damage. Yeah. The double hex really surprised OGD, I think, too. But not enough where they lost more than just the Ember. Scotty picked up by Troll. So again, Elephant looking for their moment to clean this up. LGD have been a part of so many of these styles of games. It really has been just barn burners with them. Really, really difficult. So they'll hold the high ground for now. It's a long time till Roche, a long time till that reset. So Somnus will take the outpost. Troll and does not have boots. He decided to get the MKB as his last item to be able to pierce through evasion coming out from that radiance and just uh, more damage. We'll see how that goes. You now, sometimes it backfires. Uh, he also gets the move speed uh, from the battle trance. Next row, Sean may respawn in three minutes. We had so many of those <laughs> fights. A lot of the buybacks, I felt like, you know, Roshan should respawn already. Yeah. But they lost that Aegis pretty quickly on LGD. So now we've got a long time until Roche. And it feels like these teams both want to fight, but both don't. But we'll fight, but, you know, don't hit me. We'll just uh, <laughs> try to hit you, see how things are going to go. Yeah. Don't hurt me. Please. Uh, Taking the outpost for now. So they took the outpost back. They've got the MKB finished on Ame. Practically six slotted, maybe seven, eight, eight technically with the shard as well as the Axe Blessing. Red Panda's courier dies. Elephant are coming over. Somnus with the blink as well as the last of the Lotus Orbs. Not going to be fast enough this time, but they've got the Cytopus as well as the Searing Chase. The Falls Promise is going to stop Somnus from being locked down. They mount the force that back on an Innocence who will pop that Ice Blast. Not sure that's going to mean enough. Still alive for a little bit longer thanks to the Ags on the Wraith team. They've got the double hex with the Soul Bind coming through with the BKB coming out from Jinkyu. He'll use that remnant to move on forward, trying to get a kill here onto the Grimstroke as they find themselves this Oracle as well. So the save might be in jeopardy as the Oracle is kind of singled out on this fight. They've got themselves the Ravage that only hits onto the Bat Rider as both these wolves are pecking away at the Tide Hunter. Triple. They like to eat watermelon, and that's what they're going to do by killing off Faith Beyond. Triple kill for Eurus. Five heroes dead through that exchange. No buybacks available for the Death Prophet as well as the Ancient Apparition on LGD. Oracle and Grimstroke don't have theirs either. And that is your save that is out of the fight for a while for Elephant. So are you feeling confident enough to go for this? How many buybacks do they have? One on Tide Hunter. That's it. That's, That's the it. only buyback they have. It's very hard for them to keep track considering how chaotic this uh, game was. Yeah. You know, if someone has the buyback, you maybe lost the track of time. When it happened, Roche is being pinged out. Eurus is just a monster in these fights. Every single time, Yang uses the bite on him. He just goes full ham. I like how confident Somnus is. Tidehunter tries to fake the Ravage. He doesn't even flinch. Lasso coming through onto the Wraith King. And now what else do they have to follow this up? They've got the Abyssal Blade. That's what they have to follow this up. That's yours going in after the Wraith King. They've got the first life out of his hand. He's got 3,500 gold, but does he have buyback available to him? No, it's down for another two seconds. So by the time he goes down for the second time, he will. He is definitely going down. He's trying to get some damage out before he falls for the final time before needing to use that buyback. And there he goes. Ame dead. Yuris gets credit for the kill on two of these wolves. Again, straw houses don't last when the big bad wolf comes and blows it down. And it's two wolves coming for your houses. Do you buy back here? If you buy back, you're fully committed. Like, you need to make something out of that. Somnus, a blessed by an item. Spell Prism on top of Octarine Core. Decided to take a Flaming Glass or cooldown. So it goes down to 46 seconds. So you can practically use it two, maybe even three times in a fight. I think he doesn't have buyback. Short 370 gold. I didn't even notice that because his buyback's like super expensive right now. Yeah. I swore I thought he was going to have the gold when the timer ran out, but I must have done some... He's math. level 29, dude. He he has eight slots. Shard, Aghanim Scepter, a lot of gold. Like, LGD should have lost this game. Not necessarily lost the game, but should play with the Mega Creep's disadvantage. I guess uh, Elephant were a bit afraid that he has it. Like, there's no way that he does not have buyback <laughs> there, right? 
Now they've got the lasso. Ooh, broken by the Kraken shell. Shortest so lasso in history. Coming in. Faith Beyond moving forward, trying to go after Troll for a second. He's been bit again. Two wolves. This is a pack of dogs just rampaging your base. Roche being pinged out. They scouted it with the courier straight into pit. Agony Scepter available once again. It's time to refresher. I think you get a, <laughs> give it to Troll. I think you just get that axe to Troll. Do you see how fast that wolf is hitting? <laughs> just the animation of the bite. Okay, actually, Grimstroke okay, gets that up. Something I mentioned uh, on the previous Roche, but they decided to give it. Who who actually picked it up? It, it was LGD who picked it up. Uh, Raid King. Yeah, Raid yeah. King. Yeah. No fire picked up for the Lycan. Yeah, because Troll already like has almost enough gold to buy full Aghanim's Blessing and the buyback. He still needs like uh, 3,000 gold, but uh, we'll farm it eventually. He can't get bigger than this. Troll going into the Ag's Blessing. What's the... Sold the Scotty, right? Yeah, he didn't even go for Scotty. He bought MKB. Did he? Okay. I swear somebody had it. I think he bought Scotty and then decided to like not sell it and not go for it. Right. Because I think I saw the icon. So only 967 surplus. Remnant doing that damage over time, trying to clear up these creeps. This is like the good thing when you have two racks down. You know they're coming from hopefully one direction. All right. B Cop, are you ready to do some math? Yes. So, lasso cooldown, 46 seconds, I believe, with the Spell Prism and Octarine Core, Arcane Blink, 25% on top of that. Uh, so, like 12 seconds off, or like 11 and a half. Uh, 34.6, we got our answer. Exactly, 11 and a half. I was right on it. Nicely done. Uh, this is bugged. Like, you click on the ability, it says 61.5, which is uh, incorrect. Considering he has Octarine Core, Spell Prism, and the Talon, for some reason, it's not working properly. There's the Blink as well as the Lasso coming through under the Wraithing. He's been caught once again. This is a big problem for the side of LGD, but the BKB be popped by Ame. Now, they've got the Shiva's from, nothing to save. Ame without that BKB. Like, he can just pop that Lasso, and now it's back online in 20 seconds again. side think you might have used that ninja gear they've got the ravage coming in that's on a three right it forward and this popped on multiple heroes with the ice west coming in they get the first life out of the hands of this wraith king but yuris in some trouble right cooking away on faith Another beyond he's up scepter. into the air once again they get the kill on nothing to say they'll take him out but yuris ends up surviving with the abyssal blade being put onto innocence however they take out his first life they're gonna look for the second the flame break pushing back innocence and now they're right on a yuris do they have the damage to get the kill onto the troll he's been bitten is it gonna be enough last one of the wraith king yules up into the air oh boy yuris long he won't survive down he goes oh dear nothing to say he comes back into the fight gets the kill in the years and now he's gonna buy back they look over at fy flame break pushes back ame he needs to be a little bit careful he doesn't have that reincarnation at the moment Five seconds, oh he goes down. is he gonna survive does he reincarnate is the timings right yes it is so he will have reincarnation up again somnus though low and now they bought back on yours to get the kill on the Innocence as well as Faith Beyond. They both have buyback. They'll probably both be forced to use it. You gotta defend. They don't have Ravage to work with. Oh, Innocence, man, hitting a crucial Ice Blast on Troll, who was uh, ulted by Oracle. There's the blink as well as the sun. Oh, They're going no. after Yuris. Yuris taking a lot of damage. Now they got the False Promises as well as the BKB being used. They use the Abyss Blade on a Faith Beyond. He's trying to jump away. Now they go after this Tide Hunter who is in a lot of trouble. The Nullifier thrown on a Faith Beyond as well as the damage to get the kill. But he's forgetting that he has that little bit of life left in him thanks to the Ags coming out from the Wraith from the blink forward coming out from Ame. And now the Anchor Smash. Faith Beyond finally going to drop. They'll go hey, after Yuris. Ice Blast coming in. Still surviving. Soulbind as well as the double hex. They got the no fire to both these heroes. They get the first fight out of the hands of Ame. They'll take out nothing to say. He already bought back in this fight with the BKB. Be careful. He's done. Coming in. Yuris in trouble. He's going to drop. Potentially oh. low. No survives. He survives. And they will get the kill on nothing to say. They'll this look over at Ame. They'll get the kill on the Innocence, who will survive a little bit longer. But the buyback's been used by Ame. So it's him and Jinkyu against the world. First promise will save Yang. Whoa, if there was V5. one more tick on that troll, I think he would uh, shatter from the Ice Blast, but managed to use the Satanic, full back to, uh, get back to full HP, and uh, yeah.
five versus Stu. Not a good chance. Ame goes in. No fire LGD. put on him. Look at the damage just coming in. They'll get the first up out of his hands, and there's not much that Jinkyu can do. They're all lining up for something, but they've got the lasso onto Ame as well as the second death. He'll only survive for a little bit longer. The Soulbind's there. They'll get the kill on his Jin-Q. He'll survive a little bit longer again thanks to that Axe. But LGD, they've lost everybody. And Elephant now beat LGD, and it throws the table up in the air. Everything you thought that was going to happen with this region is now all over the place. Yeah, well, what a game, actually. Like, a lot of the buybacks, uh, we see some... Good shard upgrades, uh, yeah. Aghanim scepters, uh, cooldown reductions. Uh, late game Dota is beautiful. It's chaotic. Anyone can take it. Uh, like there's there's just so many little things. Like uh, you have this dark portrait that you don't think it's dealing that much damage. Yeah. Then you have uh, like shard from the ancient apparition, from um, Ember Spirit. A lot of overtime.